Hey everybody, Josh the RV Dirt here at Bicious RV in Coldwater, Michigan today, taking a look at a 29 XBHL, which sounds like a more extreme version of the, the National Hockey League, but with like twice the barbed wire and even more blow torches. This floor plan is, it's a little bit unconventional, which is why I like it. And the other thing that it really gets me going on this one, I think is the flexibility. This is a great family bunkhouse camper. By default, out of the box, awesome family bunkhouse camper. But what's unique about it is with an L bunkhouse, this one can actually sleep like adult sized big kids that don't normally fit on small camper bunks. But the thing is, with the Versa bunk system in the back of this, it can truly function as a two bedroom. So how about an actual mother-in-law suite? Or the fact that there's nothing stopping you from just emptying the bunkhouse basically you could easily convert this into a, a mobile dog kennel maybe like a mobile dog grooming studio i don't know a craft room um you, uh, it could be a, a traveling cargo room it is an extremely flexible floor plan now to get all that flexibility they did have to do a couple things that uh, are a little bit challenging at times like the rv is it's pretty long and with about a 6,900 pound driveway and that uh, that length, I don't know that I would go recommending this for most half tons, especially if you live in like a, a hilly or a windy area. I don't know that I'd recommend a half ton on this one. I'd rather keep you safe than, you know, I don't want to get your family hurt just trying to sell an RV. Um, but there's aspects of this that like I see shades of other campers where they Frankenstein something together and came up with something over here that I think is pretty darn cool. Now I'm going to change up my order of operations a little bit. I'm going to start right here with the entry door to help you get your bearings. And then I'm just going to slide back and cop a squat over here. Um, I, I like to share the good with the bad on RVs. I'm going to go out of my way first and foremost and say, if what you're looking for is a uh, collection of campsite windows, I do believe uh, the search is still on. <laughs> but... Uh, what this one does bring to us is obviously that direct facing entertainment center. So it's a bigger RV. And like I said, with the flexible use, it doesn't have to be just a family bunkhouse camper. I could see some people using this as an office work camper. So I think a good entertainment center is a very valuable asset here. That little electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster will take a lot of the cold nip out of the air. Um, without needing to tax your uh, propane furnace system. Plus, this RV does have holding tank heaters. More on that at 11. Uh, we will come back, get all the kitchen stuff open. I sort of want to just twist and shout our way around here uh, a little bit, though, because one of the things that I'm very excited to showcase for you on this one is actually the rear room, because I think that that's, like, you've seen this living room a hundred times. You've seen a front walk-around bedroom a hundred times. Let's get to the real interesting meat and potatoes section of that. Let's look at the flexibility of this camper. Starting right here, this is a big true U dinette, which means this RV has a longer super slide. That allows for a true U dinette and a big sofa, like the, the height of bed over there, and I do believe there is a theater swaption on this. I'd be curious to know which one you would prefer. But working our way back here, like, like I said, by default, we have a bunk room but it can easily convert into a two bedroom or bunk room or second living room or office or craft room or anything you want. That's what is so cool about this one with the Versa bunk system. Now this rear room might look a little bit familiar to you. If you're familiar with the uh, 29 V bud from this family of camping, um, then you know it's basically the exact same room, but they paired it up with a completely different living room that I, I really like. Now, in case you are also kind of curious, this door down here, it's anti-slam and it does deadbolt just like the, the, the main door, basically. So you can make sure that you have security back here, whether, you know, you're using it as office space or if you got your kids back here. You want to make sure someone ain't just going to open the door and grab one of the kids. Not to mention the traveling function that that can offer us. We'll look at that in a little bit. I'm looking around. I'm trying to find the weight tag for what the bunks uh, can hold. I don't see it in here. I want to say 250 pounds, but if there's anybody who actually uh, can verify that, drop me, drop us all a comment in the comment section, and let's see if we can uh, figure that out for you. But again, if we're going to use it like an office, if you get all this stuff out of the way, you put a desk or something over here, and bam, there's the outlets that you need. You got your own little handy light, not to mention just, uh, you know, your general Lights out, kids, kind of lights. You can reach all of the lights in this room back here from this one room. And if I continue to spin you around like a record baby, one time as a joke, 
I put hashtag tears for fears on screen when I said that. I am aware that was dead or alive. You know, don't skin me dead or alive. I want to make sure you got to see. If you are using this as cargo space, I love this attention to detail. All of these extra little, uh, you know, tie downs right here. That's very, very cool, I think. Because if you're going to load, say, like, you know, the kids' bikes or e-bikes or even totes back here, you want to make sure it doesn't slide all around. Uh, uh, unless, you know, especially if you have goats in them. Those are called totes my goats. <laughs> anyway, um, if you choose to add a TV up here, you know, the, the Versalong sofa puts you on boardwalk and park place right across from it. And look at this. this. The top of this dresser that we looked at, even this is a sealed edge thermal foil countertop, which I think is very cool. Um, it's also really funny, speaking of things that are cool, uh, 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 the weather here was about 40 degrees maybe four days ago, and this is not a complaint, mind you. And then today I'm in here like Richard Simmons sweating to the oldies uh, like some big fat pig. <laughs> oh, boy. Did you notice, by the way, the, the windows all have um, blackout nightshades, and every window in here is opening for airflow. Now, you may have noticed when the dinette was down in sleeper mode, one of the cushions, <laughs> one of these things is not like the other. Well, uh, it needs a little conversion cushion, basically, to uh, fully cover that big table uh, for uh, sleeper mode. Personally, I say this all the time, but it's because I this is what I would do, is I would swap those legs out, those pedestal legs, for a set of free-floating folding legs, and I would, I'd call that good. I like the skylight up here, because this is a six-and-a-half-foot-tall conventional height interior. Um, that skylight really helps open things up, but I need to uh, get low over here so you can see that set of outlets up under the overhead cabinets by that window. Otherwise, you're going to look at this and say... Uh, what kind of dingbat designed this with absolutely uh, no window coverage? Now, you see that countertop over there? Wingardium Leviosa! You see that it magically elevates. Uh, and remember, as we learned from Ms. Uh, Hermione Granger, it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. <laughs> I had a, uh, the good fortune to take a trip to uh, Universal Studios where I got butter drunk in Harry P-Town, which if you don't know what that means, look at that door magically closing. I'm not doing that. That's creepy. Anyway, um, you know, they, they, they drink butter beer in the Harry Potter universe. You go there, you drink enough of it, you get butter drunk, you get all, you know, crazy on the, uh, the sugar rush. Little motion light here in the big walk-in hidden, you know, pantry. Uh, this could also obviously very well work for uh, you know, I, I, sorry, my brain went two different directions. The first thing I was going to say is this is a great spot to like, you know, put brooms. And then I started thinking, you know, maybe you'd put like a hanging rod in here and you could have like, uh, the line witch in the wardrobe with a pantry hidden behind, uh, all of the clothes. And you can take a trip back here into Narnia. And then I saw how big and wide open this was down here. And then I wondered, could that potentially be like a pet space? Has anyone ever put like a little dog door, cat door? down inside of something like that that would be that'd be very interesting um i think anyway uh there are no vents in the flooring as you may have noticed though the rv does maintain the use of um uh carpeting in the slide floor everyone always why why did they do that? I don't know, some people like it some people don't it's like almond joy's got nuts and mounds don't <laughs> every builder i see who makes a walkthrough bath like this they always have this weird corner sink i like how they extended it out because it's still wide open there's still plenty of room to walk around in here but it also um it gives me that extra counter space like back here where i could put like toothbrush and all that kind of stuff uh you know porcelain toilet which is great and oh, holy crap man call the batman there's a lot of space around. You can do some serious toilet yoga on that thing. There's a lot of reasons to namaste and hang out and do your business. Anyway, uh, remember, six and a half foot tall ceiling, though, means if you're six foot plus like me, by the time you step up into the shower pan and they have to do that for plumbing code, your head's going to be all up in that bubble. But notice they put a nice big tall shower surround down there, which is kind of cool, too. Um, right next to this over here, you got that little, uh, what do we, what do we want to call this one? Oh, uh, what are those beetles that, like, try to flip one another over? Elephant beetle? Is, is that what it is? Is that a dung beetle? That's an elephant beetle. What beetle is that? Ah, now I'm going nuts over here. 
great towel space and how many builders are building with only exclusively wide open storage in the bathroom i love that they actually put a door on the uh, top sections there big door side viewing window now the thing is to get to this bedroom i acknowledge like if someone's using this bathroom or this shower because there's no uh outside entry door yeah you you straight you got cut off like my uncle gary uh you know at, at the bar on a tuesday you're cut off son but um it is also extremely private up here, which is important to some people who may decide on their camping trip with their family uh, that they uh, have some laundry that they need to fold aggressively. Well, it's a very nice private space. It is also, however, only a camp queen. Um, that to me is one of those things that I, I really wish, I, I almost want to say like, you know, no more camp queens as much as we can possibly avoid it. But I get how this RV is already playing long. If you put a true queen in, you could butt scoot boogie around here. Although your butt might actually flip the light switch for the ceiling lights. Did you notice that? Um, look at, uh, behind the hanging wardrobe closet, though. They do some excellent big wide open pocket side stands with the household and USB outlets up there. Which makes the most sense to me. There are a lot of manufacturers who will put those outlets uh, down here. And then they give you headboard pockets. But the problem is, you can't use the outlets with the pockets. Which, I don't know, it does. It seems kind of defeating to me. Alright, so if you were laying on your back and your toes were pointing straight up, this is what your toes would be looking at right here. And this is your brain on drugs. So, what I'm getting at with all of this is, um, by default, this is a 30 amp rig. You can get it built with 50 amp service like we've done here, which is why there was a sticker up in that vent saying, hey, uh, if you pull this down, there's wiring, um, <laughs> don't lick it or whatever. You know, it'd be a shocking experience. So the question begs, one air or two? A lot of times, and understand this is based on my camping usage in the Midwest. I would say one air would be fine. There's a lot of cabin space in this thing. This is a longer, it's only one slide, but uh, scientifically, the, the most professional way I can say this is, dude, this is a big camper. I kind of feel like two airs would make sense up here. But if you check our website, we've only got one air in stock, or yeah, one air on the RV in stock. We can always install a second one for you. And depending on how you camp, if you just prefer fresh airflow, because remember these bedside windows open for air, and they do still have the blackout nightshades, well, we could always just install a big power fan in there for you too. And I know this is kind of tight quarters, so I did flip into fisheye camera mode for just a second to help you kind of see how the knee bone connects to the leg bone. But obviously, suddenly now, instead of being a rectangle, everything is a trapezoid. Now, after doing this for a number of years like I have, I've learned that every RV has at least one Achilles heel. Like, you've watched it up to this point, you're going, yes, yes, oh, yes. And then, oh, the bomb drops. On this one, I think the biggest bomb that we're going to drop is the road mode function, or you may say lack thereof. Because if you want to get to the master bedroom or to that bathroom, you do need to uh, open the slide out. The thing is, this type of slide system, like if you're just making a quick bathroom potty stop, it is not going to hurt this slide out to like open it partially, just enough to slip through there. Now I open that maybe six inches, meaning this is still not even as wide as a wide body travel trailer or fifth wheel, or maybe just as wide as it were. Um, so we haven't like escaped a parking space. We haven't interfered with someone next to us. You don't want to do this when it's raining. You don't want to occupy the slide when it's partially open like that. So keep that in mind. Now with the slide closed, the little kids might slip through here, but with the slide partially cracked, you can kind of slide in here. Let me actually pull that back so you can see what I'm saying. The thing is, you may have obviously noticed, there's that big giant cargo door that we saw outside. That can actually provide us a measure of travel accessibility to this model in a space that otherwise, you know, wouldn't have that function. I guess, as long as we're out here talking about a couple exterior things, like the fact that we do have a fully walkable roof, despite the lack of ladder. That's one of those things that not everybody necessarily always realizes. The, uh, you know, days gone past the camping, if it didn't have a ladder, it's because it wasn't walkable. That's just really not necessarily true anymore. So, with this big deadbolting door out here, um, just like the 29 V-Bud 
Wildwood. You know, you can get back into this room. You can use it to haul the kids bikes or grills or all that big fun stuff. Um, you know, so there, there is a measure of travel function there. In a way, it operates very nicely as a travel garage. We're just gonna keep on rolling with a little before and after magic here. Now, um, compared to the stick and tin Wildwoods, you may notice we do have tinted windows here. Now that is good uh, for uh, keeping both mother nature with the sunshine out and keeping the RV a little bit cooler as well as uh, keeping you know the nosy neighbors at the seasonal site next to you uh, from peeking into your camper quite so much. And it's kind of funny, that bathroom window, it looks so weird and out of place hanging out up there, but eh, eh, at the same time, um, I, I always like the ability for the airflow there. Plus, when I'm singing in the shower and when you're in the shower, the shower enclosure gives you that nice reverb. Oh, it makes your voice sound so good. At least to you it does anyway. <laughs> I like to treat my neighbors. Um, over here, our docking center. One of the cool things about this having that uh, walk through bathroom in front of the kitchen is that means it only requires a single sewer outlet that uh, a, a lot of the say like you know um, rear bathroom uh, or front kitchen kind of models they don't always uh, find a way to offer that now the underbelly here this is enclosed it is forced air heated that uh, it does have holding tank heaters all the way around uh, on every single holding tank as well as little uh, heater pads that's something that all of your laminated uh, Wildwood Heritage Glens are going to give you, whether it's here in the little trailers and especially up in the big fifth wheels. And um, up here on the tongue jack, I, uh, I kind of made a joke once before. I think it was on an east to west Della Terra. The uh, tongue jack supplier includes this little shroud for the tongue jack just to help keep it protected from the weather a little bit better. Very handy here in the Midwest where we get all kinds of crazy nasty snow stuff and obviously in other regions with snow stuff. It just helps the switches from fouling out but it looked like somebody slapped a uh, you know a black bag uh, over the the tongue jack and they were gonna haul it away to uh, you know Guantanamo Bay or something like that for uh, further interrogation. I, I, I don't know. Now, I'm kind of wedged up here between a few other trees. Is it me or did I? I almost sounded like Mr. Krabs, Mr. Squidward right there. I don't know that I, that's perfect, but I think that there's something to that. Maybe I can work on a, a Mr. Krabs impression uh, on my own time. I'm not going to subject uh, you good folks to that. The uh, I'm glad I left that unlocked. Huge baggage door uh, and equally large baggage door compartment over here. Now, this is cool that we see the aluminum framework. It's all welded under the bed. A lot of times when people see wood studs right there, they, they go, oh, this isn't even an aluminum skeleton camper. Um, most RVs that have a, uh, a aluminum skeleton, a lot of times it's only in the sidewalls. A lot of times the floor or the roof or the front wall or rear wall are still stick built. So, um, you know, when people say, is it laminated or is it stick built? It seems like they only are referring to the sidewalls. You, they, they build different areas of the RV differently. Like this has a stick built snow load roof. It's a laminated sidewall camper. It's a stick built floor, which is pretty common actually. But I don't think a lot of people realize that. They think that it's an aluminum skeleton sometimes like, you know, everywhere. And it isn't always, you know. This is so interesting though. When I first saw this RV rolling, it looked super weird because I knew it was a rear bunkhouse, but usually with rear bunkhouses, you have a camp kitchen shoved under a bunk. But with that moving Versa bunk, you couldn't do that. Well, that L-shaped peninsula countertop very organically lends itself to even a little miniature camp kitchen over here with the little uh, slide out, you know, griddle uh, top right here and dad's medicine cabinet above. What I do like is they did leave enough clearance where if you are grilling, obviously you want to be careful because you got a hot surface here. You could still reach over and grab the, uh, you know, beverage of your choice while you're out here uh, in, enjoying the smells, making the, I, I tell you, anytime you start grilling something or griddling as it were, the neighbors, man, they just start looking over at your camps. I go, you know, they, they start getting all nosy <laughs> bracket there for an outside TV. If you feel like adding one with the hookups below, then we got the little, uh, campsite cold sprayer here with the garden hose. Um, sometimes you, uh, you know, spray toward your kids and sometimes you missed. <laughs> Oh, I hate that joke, but I love saying jokes that make people grow in a little bit. By the way, I'm sure you figured out with the Griddleator uh, 9000 series going on, you do have a gas grill quick connect over there. Now, I mentioned this is a long trailer. The wide stance axles, they are definitely going to help this RV 
feel like it's a little bit shorter when you're towing it. That being said, I still stand by my recommendation that I don't know that this is going to be generally half ton towable. I do personally feel a general recommendation best fits into the realm of a three quarter ton pickup. And um, if somebody has some super duper crazy half ton and they got heavy duty hitching and they're experienced doing it and you know you're handling capabilities better than me. Okay, by all means, provided all your specs are in the black, that's great. But for, for, for me, with the size of it, with the weight of it, I think a three quarter ton is a little bit better recommendation. So let me know what you think of it. Um, you know, what's your favorite aspects and what would you change given the opportunity? Where did they nail it? Where did they fail it? That's the kind of stuff I love to hear from you. And I, and I really appreciate all that input you guys keep giving because it helps me stay uh, understanding of what you're looking for so I can make sure I'm trying to find the different kind of fun RVs you might like to see every day. Um, I kind of mentioned earlier, whether it's Salem or Wildwood, they're the exact same RV and we carry both Salem and Wildwood at Bish's RV. So if you see a 19 or a 29 XBHL, uh, Salem Hemisphere, it's literally the exact same RV, just the sticker on the nose changes a little bit. And I'm getting better at doing this in reverse view mirror image thing here. The weatherman ain't got much on me anymore, uh, except for probably a much better paycheck. But uh, never mind that. <laughs> when you're ready, we're ready. Until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.